Hey guys, welcome to Rough Riders. Thanks for stopping by. I wouldn't normally do these kinds of videos because my channel is typically dedicated to off-roading videos and camping and teardrops and car repair and product review stuff like that. Uh, I'm not a drone reviewer, but uh, you know I am a fan of the Skydio 2 and uh, I do actually have one on order. I'm hoping to get it here, uh, get my my com order completion uh, email here in the in the next uh, you know week or so. Um, cross my fingers. But uh, um, somebody posted something in one of the Facebook groups that caught my attention today. And, uh, and that's that Skydio filed a new uh, application with the FCC. And people are trying to figure out, you know, what it all meant. Well, being an engineer that works in the Wi-Fi space, that certainly caught my attention. And uh, I wanted to dig into this and see if I could figure out what, what uh, Skydio is up to. And so, um, you know, let's, let's take a look at, at these filings. Uh, or the, at the filing that they did today, because uh, it's actually pretty cool. So, um, you know, if you go to this FCCID.io site, this is a searchable database uh, that was uh, posted in, in the Facebook group uh, that talks about the filing that uh, Skydio did today. And uh, as you look and see right here, um, this 2AT, this was, a, uh, uh, this was the original filing back in November. Uh, uh, for for certification uh, of the of the drone and their transmission technology and so this is the quadrocopter 2.4 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi class 2 permissive change that's the important piece right there is this class 2 permissive change um, that means that they're actually changing the design of their digital transmission technology and actually when you go into the filing right um, Lots of information tells you what the product is. You know, this is a digital transmission system. Tells you a little bit about the original equipment of when it was granted its uh, filing back on November 26th. Tells you a, a little bit about the operating frequencies that they're that they're operating on and the power output, all that kind of stuff. And then down here is exhibits, and you can see here's uh, the original exhibits here uh, on November 26th, and here's the exhibits that was filed today. Right, so this is really cool. So if we go in, for example, this 228 2020, they've got a bunch of uh, information, test setup photos, right, that shows you uh, how the device was uh, tested, gives you a lot of a lot of photos of of the drone in in the test bench, and who's doing the the third party testing, all that kind of stuff for for Skydio. But then, you know, you got the test reports, and I, I went through all of these things. I went through the test report, the MPE report, all of that kind of stuff, um, test setup photos, you know, everything. Um, lots of really cool information in there for geeks like myself. Uh, most people probably won't care, care about any of that stuff. But the important one here to look at uh, was this one right here, C2PC cover letter. So when you open that up, this is what was uh, filed with the FCC. The purpose of this letter is to request a Class II permissive change for device ID 2ATQRSDRC2V1, granted on November 26, 2019. The changes are on the software side that allow the device to operate on the same frequency bands found normally within the 2.4 GHz Uni1 and Uni3 technologies, but operating at the 10 MHz bandwidth. The software changes also allow the device to operate at the 5 MHz bandwidth on the same frequency bands found normally within 2.4 GHz Uni1 and Uni3 technologies, but the channel center frequency shifted by 0.5 MHz. There is no hardware modification. So that's, uh, that's, the, that's a really important thing, right? Because what that means is it doesn't mean, it, because there's no hardware changes, First, they don't have to completely recertify the devices, which can take 12 to 16 weeks and cost tens, and thou tens of thousands of dollars to, to file. So this is all software stuff. So this is just a software update to the drone. That's the first piece. The second piece here is they're operating at the 10 megahertz bandwidth down, and they can go as low as the 5 megahertz bandwidth if they shift the channels. That's really important here, right? Because what that means is if you take a look at the normal 
Wi-Fi specifications, 802.11 uh, uh, in or 82.11 AC specifications. This is what applies to all the Wi-Fi devices. This, this is stuff that affects your phone, it affects your home network, it affects what your PC, your tablets, when you connect to a Wi-Fi network. The, these are the specifications that literally everybody follows. Okay. Now, the way the, uh, like your home router or even, you know, your, your you know, access points and stuff at work, the way they typically operate, depending on how they're set up, but they default to what's called a 20 megahertz bandwidth. You have two Wi-Fi spectrums. You have a 2.4 gigahertz spectrum and a 5 gigahertz spectrum. So this is going to get geeky. and Sorry about all that, but I'm going to try and explain this in layman's terms. So you have two spectrums, and the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum specifies the wavelength that that is that is operating at, and then the 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 you have the bandwidth of each of the channels. So in the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum, for example, you have channels 1 through 11. There's actually one through 13, but the, the usable stuff that everybody, that your, white, your router and stuff at home uses is one through 11. At a 20 megahertz bandwidth, you have three non-overlapping channels, one, six, and 11. And what that means is, is that if you're operating on, say, channel six, right? So your, your phone, your device connects to your Wi-Fi network in your home when you walk in the door and it's using channel six, and if your router is configured at the 20 megahertz bandwidth, which is probably is, um, then it's then it's uh, the next available channel that won't interfere with channel six is channel 11, right? So seven, eight, nine, and ten are overlapping because those get chewed up by the the 20 megahertz bandwidth. Okay. The 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 reason why you do that is. Um, the more bandwidth you have, the more throughput you have, which means, you know, if at home, for example, if you're streaming Netflix, you want as much throughput and bandwidth as possible because that's going to give you the, 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 the best experience for watching that movie. Now, within the specifications of both the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz uh, 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 spectrums using 802.11n or 802.11ac, you can actually double the bandwidth, you can go to 40 megahertz and in 11 AC you can go all the way up to 80 megahertz. But the downside of that is that you end up using more channels for that simultaneous connection, right? So, you know, instead of, of, of using channel 6, you might use channel 6 and 11 and go to a 40 megahertz bandwidth. That's going to give you a lot more throughput, you know, so if you were trying to stream, say, something like a 4K movie, it's going to give you a lot more data because 4K is massively more intense uh, uh, data than than you know a 720p, for example. So um, you know by increasing the bandwidth, you get more throughput, and so you can push more data through. Well, what you can do in in that same spectrum is you can actually go down to 10 and 5 megahertz. Now, generally. You don't want to do that because you lose that bandwidth. You lose you lose that throughput, which means you can't punch a lot of data through. Um, but in the case of what's happening here, is what Skydio is doing is they're chopping the the bandwidth down. The flip side of why you would want to do that is because it extends your range. You can go a lot further because you're not pushing as much data through, and so that gives them uh, the ability to go further. So by them saying here that they're operating at 10 megahertz bandwidth, even you know, with the potential to go down to five, means that they could potentially extend their range quite a bit further. So this is really, really exciting because one of the drawbacks that everybody has seen, well, I won't say everybody, but a lot of people have seen uh, with their Skydios is that they don't get the range that they would like to get, especially when you compare it to something like the DJI uh, uh, Mavics and stuff like that, which can go way, way out there. So this is going to allow them to get a lot more, more further range. But the downside of that is the data coming back to your, your phone on the controller um, is going to be at a lower resolution. So, you know, you're, you know, if, you know what they're going to be, what resolution, I don't know. They don't, they don't say in here uh, any, of, any of that kind of stuff. So I don't know what the resolution is going to be. But let's say, for example, instead of saying 1080p coming back to your phone, it's 720p or maybe it's 420 or something like that. Um, 
that's fine because that's just your FPV. That's not impacting what's actually being recorded on the SD card on the drone because it's still recording at 4K. It's just talking about what's being transmitted back to the phone that allows you to see where the drone is, is flying. So taking a lower resolution there is fine because in, in reality you're not going to see, you know, for example, you know, if you tried to watch 4K video on your phone, it's not going to, you wouldn't need to see a huge difference between that and 1080p because the screen is so small on this and the pixels are so crammed together um, that you wouldn't see a big difference between the two. So, you know, dropping the, the resolution back to the, to the controller, to the, to the phone, not, not going to be that big of a deal. It's still going to allow you to see everything and, 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 and see where you're piloting this stuff. Uh, but it's going to have a, the benefit of getting you a lot further range. So this is really exciting stuff. And uh, I thought I'd share that with you guys because, you know, you know I, I, I think what Scottio has done with this drone is just is unmatched. Uh, the architecture, as I said, if you haven't seen my other videos, do check those out because I do give you kind of the engineering breakdown of why this drone is so unique and so different than everything else out there. And also why it's going to take, uh, you know, I think DJI a little bit to get caught up uh, because, you know, the, the architecture of this thing is just brilliant. And uh, this is just another example of how this thing can can be radically improved with just software updates. They've got so much processing power in this drone that they can do a lot of software updates, add a lot of new functionality, add a lot of new flight paths and, and all that kind of stuff, extend the range as we're seeing here uh, to make this drone that much better. So this is, this is really exciting. Uh, and you know, I hope you found this video informative. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. If you have any questions, comments, leave it below. Uh, and I'll try and answer those as best I can, and we'll see you next time.